Okay, hello everyone, <laughs> sorry. And um, welcome to another iteration of the videos for ITT 610. Um, this one, we're gonna go over uh, topic three, which is cloud infrastructure. And this is the first pretty substantial lab uh, for the course uh, where we're going to use virtualization and we're gonna walk through uh, building our little, our, our simulated or virtual cloud environment. Um, essentially, I'm gonna take time to go through some of the steps of the virtual lab. Once again, if you have any issues, please uh, contact your instructors um, and they should be able to walk you through um, some of these particular steps. Uh, make sure you read through chapters three and four in the textbook, they are very, very helpful. Uh, and please you know, go through the resources, they will help you as well. All right, so getting down to the, to the objectives, basically we're gonna set up a Kubernetes multi-node cluster and an engine, excuse me, and GenX service across two Ubuntu servers. And these are virtual servers. And then demonstrate how Kubernetes and Docker are connected within a cloud infrastructure. And this is probably the best way to take a look at, at how a cloud infrastructure works um, to, to get started on this lab. And primarily we're, we're wanting you to, to, we're assuming that you can set up the two Ubuntu servers without any issues in, in your virtual environment. Once again, if you have any problems, please you know, contact your instructor. So let's go over to uh, our actual document um, that goes through the, the lab steps. Uh, let's see, let me figure out which one it is. All right. All right, so this is basically the lab steps uh, in building a cloud structure. So once again, we're gonna use a virtual uh, platform where, where they're using virtual box or visual, um, excuse me, VMware. It will work on either. Um, and essentially, Ubuntu, as far as the ISOs, they're pretty easy to come by. And there's not any particular version as long as you have an operational Ubuntu server environment. Um, essentially, if you need help in setting up a uh, setting up Kubernetes um, on an Ubuntu, uh, there are several links make sure you, you navigate to these links. They're all appropriate. Uh, and they do apply to any version of Ubuntu. Um, and what we're looking for essentially is you providing screenshots of your, your progress through this whole scenario where you're setting up the servers and you're walking through basically, you know, creating a cloud environment. Uh, we are asking you to create a document titled, titled it with your last name and then ITT 610 and K8's, um, basically K8's Kubernetes lab. All right, so the first thing you're going to do is create a master node. That's going to be your, your first server um, in, 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 a, in, in cloud, within a cloud environment, you usually have some type of master node and slave nodes. And we're gonna take a look at that. So make sure you follow these instructions, uh, give your, your Ubuntu as far as the virtual the virtual machine, 10 gigs of space, two gigs of RAM, uh, two CPUs, and make sure you're connected uh, using a NAT uh, network adapter. Um, and basically what we're going to do is ask you to, uh, to set up two adapters, one NAT and one host only. Uh, and basically that will represent the, the external and internal parts of your, of your cloud infrastructure. Um, you can do an SSH, uh, we want you to also pay attention and set up an SSH server as part of the server. Um, and this is what we'll use, you know, with the do Docker and the Docker snaps. Um, you do have two options here um, and both will work effectively. And it's just essentially uh, <clears throat> the method that you use to, to update your servers. So look at those in details, detail and figure out which one that will best fit your, your criteria. Um, so either work, either will work. All right, and then step two is create your node one. Um, once again, you're still setting up uh, essentially your nodes or, or your master node and then your slave node or your node one. And you're, you will see that this will create your, your actual cloud existence and you'll be able to run through hopefully without any issues. 
I do want to point out that this lab will go will cover two weeks of the course, so you you will have plenty of time to go through go through the lab, experience any difficulties, and then you know revisit it or take a break, etc. So keep that in mind. All right. So on the master node, we have a you know a few steps that we want to do to set up a uh, Docker and and the Kubernetes. Uh, make sure you follow these instructions you know in a terminal. Um, and remember, this is Linux, so hopefully this is not going to surprise you. Uh, so you're running a sudo command, some sudo commands, and basically you're pu pulling in the Docker version that you'll use as your container uh, for your, your cloud environment. Um, you, will you will get a join token for running, running the following on the master. Um, and basically make sure you, you do an IF config and essentially make a note of your network structure. Um, you, you want your IP address, et cetera. And this, this command is how you will set up your, your master, your Kubernetes master node and connection to Docker. All right, <clears throat> excuse me. Okay, then onto your, your node one or your slave node, uh, you, you want to set up um, a token so that you can read from the, the node one to the master node, et cetera. Um, you know, so edit, edit the token script by removing all, but put the address um, on the same network as the master. So you're creating a connection between your, your, your node one and your master node. Run, run your nano uh, token uh, .sh, basically creating that shell or that script. And you wanna change the mod, do a change mod um, on that token to make sure it's available. Um, so yes, make sure you walk through these, these commands specific, specifically because this will help to set up <clears throat> your structure, excuse me. Uh, you can validate that your Kubernetes and your, and your nodes are communicating by running this command, the micro K, uh, uh, K-U-B-E-C-T-L, get nodes and it'll basically showcase all the nodes that are on that particular uh, communication infrastructure. And then, and most of this, I'm, I'm going through it pretty rapidly, but uh, you can always return and, and essentially test this until you get a ready state uh, from, from the return in, that, that term, in these commands and terminal. So you want to test Nginx uh, deployment in the cluster. You're actually creating a cluster, a cloud cluster. Uh, so you want to create an Nginx deployment and expose, uh, and, and, and expose as a service from the master. So you're basically creating an as a service, uh, a cloud existence from the master. And these are the commands. Uh, once again, uh, you can run these and you should be able to run these in terminal and it should produce a result. Um, and then you wanna make sure the pod and services are running. You can run the command to check all of that. Um, and that's what um, that command is under, under step seven. All right, so once you, you reach this point, you should be in pretty good shape as far as uh, understanding how the, the connection is working between your nodes. Um, we do want you to run basically to get the service IP of the public port. You know, this essentially, this command, these commands um, to, to bring back the service from, from those ports. Um, and this is, Basically, you're still running this from your, your node one uh, and, and it's validating the connection between node one and the master node. Um, so all of these, based on what you receive as far as your public IP and your master IP should make sense because that's where you're creating the, the, the connection and communication between the nodes. All right, then uh, <clears throat> you wanna to check to see if the, the Nginx service is, is up or down. And there's a series of commands that you want to, to run once again, to check, to make sure you do have, <clears throat> um, you know, good deployments between the, the node one and the master node. Uh, one, one thing or a few things to, to uh, keep in mind, uh, if the pod is stuck in pending, uh, one reason is that it cannot be scheduled onto a node, meaning that you don't have a good connection. Generally, this is because there's insufficient resources on one, on one type or another that prevents scheduling. So, Make sure you, you're providing those that that setup, that initial setup, um, you know, two processors, you know, uh, two two gigs at least. Um, so, 
and also if the if the pot is stuck in pending, another reason could be disc uh, disc pressure and it and it exists if the disc capacity is low. Uh, all of these you you want to make sure you check. So if the pod is stuck and pending, go ahead and check, uh, run a Kubernetes check. Um, basically, this, this will check the status of the pod and ensure that it's, it moves from pending uh, to a scheduling status. All right, <clears throat> install Kubernetes dashboard. This Kubernetes actually does have a pretty good dashboard. Um, that's a part of the package that you download on, onto the master. So you wanna run these commands on the master uh, the micro K8S, enable dashboard. Um, this should, if everything is running correctly, it, you should uh, see an indication that the dashboard will run successfully on your master. Um, also run um, a check or at least start your proxy. And then basically, you know, the, the, the reason why you want a proxy is ensure that that network is clean and you have a good connection between your, your node one and your master. Um, so now, <clears throat> after you've done that, go ahead and we'll open the terminal on node one and see if you can do an, um, an SHH connection, uh, just running this command on, on node one. And it should, you should be able to get your security token um, for the dashboard by running, running the following command on, on your host machine terminal, or command, excuse me. Um, <clears throat> make sure it's, it's exactly with all the appropriate information um, and that that goes for all of these commands. Um, and you, I guarantee you, you'll have to go through this, and you probably run through some failures. Just I guarantee, I just suggest keep going, get as far as you can. Uh, this is a pretty complicated process. Take your time. Uh, make sure you you're, you're you know put, you know inputting the commands correctly in the terminal, and just keep going. It's it'll be a glorious thing once you. You, you know, you reach the end of this lab and you ha actually have a cloud service running. <clears throat> okay, so you can ac access the dashboard from the host machine uh, by copying and pasting the token um, with that previous command. And basically you can inspect the various options, namespaces, nodes, et cetera. Uh, if you just run this particular, um, you're just essentially accessing the dashboard uh, via the proxy and it'll look, you know, like a dashboard. So, so from your host, you should be able to do that. So when done, close the host machine uh, and control C from the proxy running. So basically you're stopping um, the proxy running on the master. Uh, so ultimately you want to delete everything from the master and node one only, only if you want to delete the Nginx service and leave the cluster. So the way you delete that Nginx service and there's commands that I've, I've included that comes from this, this lab that basically will, will you know, walk through that process or, or cause that process to occur. Um, you know, so on node one or your second Ubuntu, make sure you run the, the leave as far as, as, far as your um, clean, you know, cleaning process. And then on the master, it's a little bit different, but you're, you're making sure that you're, you're including all of the namespaces from your cloud scenario. Um, so after that, you should have a clean connection between node one. You should have your nodes ready. And this is how you have, you have, this is the way that you would create a multi-node scenario, or two, in this case, a two-node scenario. So you can create a, a pod uh, with a YML file. And this is something that you will acquire. So, so power up the VM using nanotext editor uh, to create the following, and you're creating a file. So, um, and essentially, if you don't know how to run um, the um, the nanotext editor, editor basically the command is nano, and then you know, the name of the file. Um, so you would walk through these steps. Um, but first, <clears throat> make sure you are in the, uh, the editor, and essentially you want to add this particular information from the image here. Um, and then you want to create the file by running this command uh, because you, you've just created this, this, uh, this, what we're calling test volumes. And then here's our naming convention up here, uh, dash pod.yaml. And so you want to make sure 
that within your Kubernetes, you're, you're, you're creating that pod. And then you want to execute the pod and validate the, the mounted volume, essentially how that pod works. So essentially you want to run the test volume mounting command, which is there. And essentially after you've completed that, and it, it, it seems like a lot, uh, but basically you will, you will have a service or an as a service running. So you've completed your, your essentially your cloud infrastructure or you satisfy the requirement of creating a Kubernetes with Nginx um, on, on two nodes uh, for this lab. So once again, uh, I would recommend you know, going through this very slowly, uh, you will need to refresh your, your Linux you know, knowledge. And, and Kubernetes is pretty straightforward. It does you know, you know, work pretty well once you, you um, launch and you know, essentially implemented all the commands. All the commands that you need are in here. You should go to anything else. Um, this lab is, you know, is or this, this particular topic is two weeks long. So you, once again, you have plenty of time to get through it. And there's really no reason to rush through the lab. Um, as a matter of fact, I would recommend uh, ensuring that I go through it a couple times just to make sure uh, that you, know, you understand what you're trying to accomplish. The cloud infrastructure uh, is pretty complex, but you can use Kubernetes uh, uh, with Docker and Nginx to, to make sure that you have a cloud service running between the nodes. So once again, if you have any issues, and this is a pretty, well, it's a straightforward lab, but it, it does have a lot of uh, components in it that you may not be familiar with, but that's fine. Um, the big thing is that we want you to experience setting up an environment like this, because that is essentially one of the most important parts of the lab. So thank you for, for you know, walking through this video, walking through the lab, um, and just keep going, you'll do fine.